as you become more familiar with Linux systems, you're probably going to run into certain commands or even combinations of commands that have a very long convoluted syntax. Now, although these commands are going to be extremely useful to you, and it's also good to just do them from the command line instead of going through some GUI that might be different on different systems, it's still going to get very annoying to type out all of that syntax every single time that you want to run those commands, especially if you have to run them very often, or maybe you find yourself in a situation where you're working through your lunch break and you're trying to type in these commands one-handed while you eat a sandwich with the other hand, that's gonna get really annoying to do. But luckily, we have aliases. So aliases are a way for you to run a specific set of commands or even a script that contains a bunch of different shell commands and logical operations and flow and all that good stuff, but you can run it just with your own custom shell command uh, that's basically a short string that maps to that stuff. Uh, or it could be a long string, but obviously creating super long strings kind of defeats the whole purpose of doing aliases. Um, so anyway, let's just take a look at some aliases so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, so we'll look at my alias RC file. Um, now technically this isn't where you would normally define your aliases. Um, you're technically supposed to do them inside of bash RC, but you can see I included this line here for bash to basically load that alias RC file, uh, just so that I don't have to define all the aliases here within bash, because as you can see, I've got quite a few of them here. Uh, so this would get pretty convoluted if I actually did have them all inside of bash RC. So you can include this same line inside of your bash RC uh, if you want to load aliases that way. Um, so anyway, let's get right into them. Uh, I've got this one here, EK, which basically just stands for edit kernel. Um, and you can see what it's doing. So it's changing directory to USR SRC Linux, and then it's doing a sudo make menu config. So we can just go ahead and run it uh, from this one here. I uh, don't want it to be too big because then it's not going to load menu config correctly. Uh, this should be big enough for the phone people to see it though. So there you go, simple EK and we're already in there. Um, this is gonna be a very common thing you'll do on a Gen 2 system, messing with your kernel, uh, adding new options, taking away options that you don't need. Uh, so yeah, it's really nice to just be able to do that with two, uh, two keyboard presses. Then we have MK, and this is actually calling on a script that is inside of um, my uh, kernel directory. And MK just pretty much stands for make kernel. So we'll take a look at it. Rebuild kernel.sh, so it's just loading uh, well, it's mounting the boot partition, and then it's doing a make modules prepare, and then make install, and merge, uh, all of that good stuff, and then making that new kernel bootable. So this is what you would have to do to actually install the kernel anytime that you edit its configuration or you're actually updating it to a new kernel version. And you can see this is very handy. Like there's lots of syntax that's here. It would take you probably a a minute or two to actually type all of this out. Um, and that's just the amount of time to type it because keep in mind, uh, some of these take a while to run, like, and there's mistakes that can be made. So like, for example, with this make command, uh, if you don't include the J8 or, you know, like J16, if you've got 16 threads in your processor, then this isn't going to run as quickly. Uh, so that's something that you could forget to do. Um, and of course you have to be uh, root to run all of this. So if you forget to do the sudo, then you're gonna have to retype the command with sudo. That's actually a common thing that you're gonna see with a lot of these. Uh, they're commands that would require sudo, um, but if you don't type that, and that's probably happened to all of us as Linux users, you go to do something and you forget sudo, then like I said, you have to redo it, but aliases will prevent that from happening if you include sudo in them. Uh, so that's the MK kernel, or make kernel rather. Uh, then we have sync, so that just does a sudo emerge sync. Uh, this is basically the same thing as apt update, so um, 
you know, apt update, maybe you won't create an alias for that, or I think on like Pac-Man, it's Pac-Man S. So uh, it's not super long syntax, but it might still be helpful uh, for you to, like you could alias um, like Pac-Man S or something like that to, uh, to do the sudo command. So again, it could be useful uh, for you to just make sure you never forget to do that. Uh, then there's update. So this is, well, this is more like the same thing as apt get upgrade or apt upgrade because um, sync is just making sure that all of your packages are uh, at the newest versions, like checking to see what the newest versions of them are. And then this uh, sudo emerge little u, big u, big d, little q at world actually updates all the packages. Um, in fact, this is the shorthand version of the command. The long version is this. And this is probably what you're doing if you are actually typing this command out. Um, you know, maybe you're smart enough to remember <laughs> all these different uh, shorthand command switches. Uh, Portage, it has probably more switches than any other package manager out there. So uh, it can be a little convoluted to actually memorize all this stuff. Uh, but again, you could just use aliases to keep it super simple. Uh, and you could reuse these aliases across all your other Linux systems. So if you use uh, multiple different distros, you know, all distros, they have an update, but the syntax is gonna be different depending on what package manager you're using. But this way you can just map update to always be uh, whatever that exact syntax is to update. Uh, then we have LS PKGS. So this basically just means like list packages. Uh, so if I do LS PKGS, Uh, oh, I'm in my Linux directory. I actually don't want to do this here. So let's try it again. And then boom. So what this is doing is uh, QList IRV just creates a list of all packages, um, but it prints it, it just prints it into your uh, shell. So like QList IRV, it just lists everything there. Um, so it's putting it into a file called packages, which you can see we have right there, and then it's opening it in Vim. So it's combining a few different commands that I would be doing uh, just into one, so it saves me some key presses. So that's gonna be it for all of the Gen 2 specific stuff. Uh, hopefully, you guys that run other distros made it this far into the video. This is stuff that you can use on any Linux distro now. So my IP. Uh, this is curling ipinfo.io forward slash IP. This is basically just going to give you your public IP address. So don't confuse this with your private IP uh, that your router gives you. Like if I do an IF config, um, you know, this is what it is on your local network, but this from IP info is giving you the public IP. So this is what you would see, or this is what websites would see uh, whenever you connect to them or different services out there on the internet. Uh, so this will prevent you from having to like open up a web browser and then Google what's my IP. Um, very useful if you want to use a system-wide VPN or proxies, uh, or if you're dealing with something like a seed box where maybe you need to change your public facing IP address but you don't want to have to deal with, especially on a seed box, you don't want to have to deal with installing a whole web browser and then going inside of it uh, when it's just going to be managing torrents. That's obviously quite a bit of bloat to add to your system uh, for that kind of setup. Uh, so then we have a, another alias that deals with networking. We have ports. So this is just going to run netstat with tu lan p so that you can see all of the open ports that are on your system. Uh, then we have untar, and as the name implies, this will unpack a tar archive. So this is really handy for not having to remember the command switches, the z, x, v, f, that uh, go with it. I know this is something that's kind of difficult for people who are new to Linux or 
uh, new to dealing with, especially like a minimalist setup where you don't have like a GUI front end to deal with this. Uh, remembering the command line options can be a little tricky, but just alias it. Untar, that's easy to remember. Uh, so SHA, this is um, SHA sum A256. This is used for doing the checksum of files. Uh, say for example, if you download a ISO of Linux, it usually comes with a checksum so that you can verify the integrity of it, make sure that it hasn't been modified in any way. Uh, so that's pretty handy. LM basically means uh, list modified or like list last modified, uh, whatever you want to call it. But basically it's doing an LS and then putting them all into one column and sorting it by last modified. So like if I do LM here, uh, you can see that the last modified uh, folder was OBS videos uh, because I have actually another recording of this video that's in there that has screwed up audio because for whatever reason, my mic decided to have screwed up audio, but I fixed it. Hopefully it's gonna sound good in this video. So that's LM. Uh, then we have LT. So what this is doing is it's doing an LS that's going to display the size of each item and then it's going to sort it by size and it's going to do it into a single column and it's going to do it in a human readable format. Uh, so basically it's going to list it in uh, megabytes, something that's pretty easy for you to understand. So boom, LT shows exactly what I just told you. Uh, so that's pretty handy. Um, oh, and while I'm typing out uh, clear <laughs> fully, this is actually a new um, alias that I just created. So CL for clear, that way I don't have to type EAR, saves me a few key presses. Just gotta remember to actually use that alias. Like I said, I just added this today. Um, so then these aliases, um, they're the same as other commands that already exist in your system, right? CP, MV, RM. And what this is doing is it's actually overriding those commands with an alias. So every time that you do a CP, it's going to actually do this. And uh, what this CP is, is um, we'll just do this. Uh, oh, I already have a test, okay. Um, and we'll just touch test inside of there too. Okay, so I have this folder with a file in it called test. And I also have this uh, file. Um, didn't I just create? Yeah, so I have this file called test as well. Uh, it's, it's in here somewhere. So basically, Normally when you copy something, if it has the same name as something else, like if you're copying it to a directory that has a uh, file with the same name, it's going to just overwrite it by default. But if I cp test into test, uh, that didn't work. Let me just try it with um, something else. Touch 120. Okay, so I have this file 120 and then I have 120 in here. So if I try to copy 120 into test, it's going to give me this prompt here, do you want to overwrite uh, this 120? So it's not just going to automatically overwrite it, it's going to prompt you uh, if you're in a situation where it's gonna be overwritten. Um, same thing that we're doing with MV. So if I try to move 120 into test, it's saying, hey, you've already got a file with the same name in here, do you want to overwrite it? Uh, so th that's pretty handy uh, if you want to just change the default behavior of a certain command. Uh, like if you always run a command with a, a certain command line switch, it just makes sense to override it. That way you don't have to keep typing that switch over and over again. Um, so MKD, this is actually another one that I'm thinking of just overriding and changing this to MKDIR. Uh, although MKD is a shorthand of MKDIR, so we'll see. Uh, but basically what this is doing is it's creating a parent directory. Um, so if I just remove uh, that test folder. So now there is no test folder. If I wanted to create one, 
but I also wanted to create a subdirectory inside of it. So we'll say like subtest. Uh, you can't do that, right? Because this test folder doesn't already exist. So Linux is like, hey, what are you talking about? I can't create a folder in something that doesn't exist. But if you do it the MKD way, it creates the parent directory. So there you go. We have test and we have subtest. So that's pretty handy. Um, YT, so this is an example of where, uh, again, you have a very useful command and program, YouTube DL, but the syntax for working with it is pretty long and convoluted. So you don't wanna have to type that every single time that you're going to use YouTube DL. Uh, just alias it to YT, so that way it's gonna be a whole lot quicker. Um, and you might also notice that here, um, you, you can, so when you create aliases, you can use aliases that are defined above it inside of uh, that new alias you just created. So like here, uh, YTA, instead of doing YouTube DL here, we can just do YT, which already maps to all of this syntax here. Uh, in YTA, this is just grabbing the best format audio of whatever video that you pass to it. So uh, that's pretty handy. Um, G, map to get, so that way you could just do like a G commit, G push, instead of typing out get. Saves you a little bit of key pressing. SDN, so this is going to shut down now. So instead of typing out the whole pseudo shutdown H now, you just do SDN and uh, it does its thing. So play, uh, this is calling on another script. So we'll take a look at um, dot config scripts mpv full screen uh, so what this is doing kind of like the name implies it's calling mpv with the full screen argument and uh, this just means to to give it a command argument uh, so it's ex it's expecting one um, argument which is going to be a YouTube video um, and then and disown so what this is going to do is it's going to play the YouTube video that you pass to it, it's going to automatically be full screen. And disown means that it's not going to be uh, connected to that terminal that you launched it from. So normally uh, when you launch MPV from a terminal, it opens up the video, but you base it's still connected to the terminal, right? So disown means it's detached from it and then you can use that terminal you ran it from to do other things uh, you can close it and it's not going to close mpv so just a really handy thing to do and again it sucks having to type out all of that syntax um, now you can also use alias to add uh, color to commands so these commands like ls grep diff ccat these are all things where you might want to have some color so that it's easier to understand what you're looking at. And this just makes it so that it's automatically going to do that color without you having to use all of this different syntax. So yeah, there you go. Those are my command line aliases. Uh, let me know which command line aliases you're using. If you're using anything different from that, tell us in the comments below. Uh, maybe I could incorporate some of them into Alias RC, or maybe somebody else viewing could incorporate them. Let me know which alias you enjoyed the most. Thanks for watching.